welcome to Expert Guide's YouTube channel. My name is Mary Catherine C. Soriano, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Physical Therapy from World City Colleges, taking up Master of Science in Physical Therapy in Our Lady of Fatima University. I'm a licensed physical therapist and a college instructor. In this video, we will be differentiating between bacteria and viruses. Let us first talk about bacteria. Bacteria are unicellular organisms with simple cell structure. Nucleus and membrane-bound organelles are absent. Cellular activities are controlled by genetic information contained in a single loop of DNA. Bacteria are prokaryotes, lacking most structures present in animal cells. They function as independent organism in pairs, clusters, or chains. Cellular structure of bacteria include the following. The cell wall, outer covering that gives protection and shape to the cell. The capsule is an additional covering that protects the cell, helps retain moisture, and also helps the cell to adhere to surfaces and nutrients. Plasma membrane encloses the cytoplasm where the nucleoid material and ribosomes are suspended. Bacteria can also have pilus or plural pili, hair-like structures on the surface that attach to other bacterial cells. Some also have flagellum, long whip-like protrusions for cells' motility. How do cells multiply? Bacteria reproduce by binary fission. It basically follows the process of mitosis, a single parent cell that replicates its DNA prior to division. Once the process is completed, two new daughter cells are formed. Bacteria are always associated with infections and multiple diseases. But the question is, are bacteria always that bad? The answer is no. Bacteria also play good roles. First and foremost, bacteria act as decomposers. They ensure cycling of nutrients. Bacteria also help in digestion and they help protect the cells in the intestines from invading pathogens and also promote repair of damaged tissue. Bacteria also play a role in cycling of nitrogen and they are useful in making fermented foods such as cheese and yogurt. Bacteria aren't so bad after all. Now let's talk about viruses. A virus is an infective agent that typically consists of a nucleic acid molecule in a protein coat, too small to be seen by light microscopy, and able to multiply only within the cells of a host. They are intracellular parasites. They don't possess the same cellular structures that are present in bacteria. Typical parts of a virus include the capsid, proteins that coat around the nucleic acids. The genetic material can either be DNA or RNA. Together, they are collectively called nucleocapsid. The glycoproteins function either as transport channels or form viral antigens. The membrane or envelope protects the genetic material in their life cycle when traveling between host cells. Although there are naked viruses, those that don't have envelopes. The viral matrix proteins are structural proteins linking the viral envelope with the virus core. If viruses are acellular, how do they multiply? We have mentioned that viruses are intracellular parasites and they depend on the host cells to survive. The first step 
of viral replication is adsorption. It is when a virus becomes attached to the host cell. Next is entry. Once inside the cell, the viral capsid is degraded and its nucleic acid is released. This is followed by replication of the viral genome where it is copied and its genes are expressed to make viral proteins. New viral particles are then assembled. The last step is the release of the new viruses produced in the host cell. Then, they are able to infect adjacent cells and repeat the replication cycle, thus spreading the infection. Remember, some disease-causing viruses start making new copies of themselves very quickly after entering the host cell, which oftentimes outpace the immune system's production of protective antibodies. Rapid virus production can result in cell death and spread of the virus to nearby cells. Some viruses replicate themselves by integrating into the host cell genome, which can lead to chronic illness or malignant transformation and cancer. Are viruses always bad? Viruses also play the good guys. Remember that. Just like bacteria, viruses also play some important roles. They infect and destroy bacteria that are causing disease. They fight against other viruses. And they ensure the proper development of the immune system. It's exercise time! For every description, you will identify whether it's about bacteria or virus. Ready? Number one, a cellular. You have five seconds to think of the answer. This is virus. Number two, possesses a cellular machinery. That is bacteria. Obligate intracellular parasites. These are viruses. Number four, it invades a host cell and takes over the cell, causing it to make copies of their own DNA or RNA. The answer is virus. Number five, lack of cellular machinery. The answer is virus. And the last one, Reproduced by binary fission. The answer is bacteria. Great job, guys. And that ends our lesson. If you learned a lot from this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell there to get notification for about the new videos posted. Also, like and share our Facebook page. That's www.facebook.com slash Expert Guides Review Center Katipunan. Expert Guides also offers online review and enrichment courses. These programs aim to give review of all the topics in all subjects from grade 7 to grade 11. Secondly, the programs will give you advanced topics in grade 12, specifically in mathematics and science. Most importantly, it will prepare you for the college examinations. 
although there is no announcement yet for the college entrance exams, it is always better to be prepared. See you again soon, guys. Again, thank you very much for watching and remember to always stay safe.